Okay, uh, it's great to be here. Um, great to have the slot just before lunch, when everyone's more interested in lunch than, than what I've got to say. Um, so, just to get in the mood, I'll, I'll talk about food. Um, I'll talk about Mars Bar. Why a Mars Bar? Well, you know the old slogan, a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play, whether it's running marathons or playing in other ways. Um, talking to my nutritionist friends, what they say actually is that you can't use that slogan anymore because it can't be scientifically proven. The nearest you can get is, a Mars a day makes you fat. <laughs> I've not seen that used in, in any adverts yet, but uh, I'm sure that they will come. But as I see it, it's all about energy. A Mars bar is all about energy, whether it's for working, resting, or playing, or getting you fat. It's where it comes from and what you do with it that counts. So, in terms of, of the energy in a Mars bar, how much energy is there? How, what can you do with that? You can do lots of things with, with that energy. The energy in a Mars bar, um, if you convert it into to energy, can power lots of different things. It can replace uh, batteries, it can do lots of other things. But how much energy are we talking about? How much energy do we need? How much energy do we use? In the UK, we are addicted to energy. We use about 50 billion watts of energy. Uh, and that's an incredible amount. 50 billion doesn't really mean anything to me. It's such a big number. The only thing I can think to compare it with is the Greek debt mountain. So let's think about something that's a bit more manageable in terms of size. And that's why I'm, I'm thinking about a mobile phone. A mobile phone uses about one watt. So that's a kind of manageable amount of, of energy. Um, obviously, the normal way of powering a mobile phone is from batteries. But let's think about what we could do with a Mars bar. Um, we, we've heard before about Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. The energy inside a Mars bar um, corresponds to a weight, a mass of, of 58 grams. 58 grams times the speed of light squared is enough energy to keep your mobile phone going for a million times the age of the Earth. So that's quite a long time, long enough for most conversations. Um, <laughs> but on that basis, that energy would also be enough to keep the UK going for a whole day. Okay, so uh, an incredible amount of energy if we, if we believe what Einstein says. The problem is that you, know, you can't do nuclear fusion with a Mars bar. Uh, I don't know if anyone's tried, but, uh, but I'm, I'm doubtful whether it would work. So we're talking about nutritional energy. So how much nutritional energy is there in a Mars bar? Well, there's 260 calories, which uh, corresponds in, in terms of nutritional energy to enough energy to keep your mobile phone going for about 10 days. So that's, that's pretty good, especially when you compare it to the alternatives. It, obviously, the alternative is, is a battery. The energy inside a, a, a Mars bar is the same as 100 AA batteries. Okay, so it's an incredibly powerful source of energy. Um, I don't know if you've counted, but there's not 100 there, just to save you <laughs> the trouble. Um, obviously, a Mars bar is a lot cheaper than uh, 100 batteries. It's also a lot, lot better in some other ways. Obviously, yeah, you know, Mars bars are not particularly healthy for humans. Um, they contain some, some you know, fairly unpleasant things. Um, I hope there's no one from Mars here, by the way. Um, but if you think about batteries, batteries also contain a lot of very nasty chemicals. And you know, they end up usually in landfill sites. In the UK, again, we use about a billion batteries a year. So that's 16 for every man, woman, and child. 90% of those end up in landfills and essentially poisoning the environment. So what I'd like to... to to talk about really is, is what can we do about that? Are there alternatives? Are there other ways of, of getting away from our addiction to batteries? Because we are addicted to batteries. We're addicted to energy. Okay. Um, so we're not going to be able to replace all batteries or all other conventional sources of energy, but there are situations where maybe we can make some impression, reduce the number of batteries that we chuck out, reduce our dependence on, on energy, and maybe just get ourselves thinking about what energy involves. Because you know, it's, <clears throat> there's so much energy available, it's so cheap, so readily available, that it's easy to forget about what we do with it, how much we waste. So, 
in terms of, of what we do with energy, humans are very efficient at taking nutritional energy and converting it into useful energy. Okay? The average human consumes about 200 calories per day, and that averages out about 100 watts, okay? so enough to power 100 mobile phones. We do a lot with a relatively small amount of power. Okay? That's a lot less than your average desktop PC, and obviously we can do a lot more with our 100 watts than that. And even when we're sprinting, um, or running marathons, we probably only use about 1,000 watts. That's quite small beer, really, you know, less than a boiling a kettle. Um, so, in terms of, of that compared to the amount we use overall, it's, it's, it's quite small. You know, to, to replace the Drax power station just up the road, uh, it would require 4 million people sprinting continuously to generate that kind of power. So we're not going to be able to do that, that kind of amount. But what about energy that we waste? A lot of the energy we waste, uh, we could use to, to power some of our devices. But the problem is, how do you capture that energy? How do you do it in a way that's not going to inconvenience the user, the person who's generating the power? So there's a few ideas that, that people have looked at how to generate power from human activity. Um, everyone in this room is breathing, I hope. Um, <laughs> The, the, the amount of breath going in and out of our lungs, uh, if we wanted to, could generate about one watt, enough to power one mobile phone. Okay? All it would need is some sort of mask over your mouth. It might make breathing a little bit more difficult. It might be a little bit uncomfortable, but it, it would power your mobile phone. That's, that's maybe not an ideal solution. Um, another thought, there's blood flowing through your arteries. Okay? Anything where there's movement, flow, that's a potential source of energy. You could put a turbine in your artery, <laughs> and again, that would generate enough for your, for your mobile phone. That may not be a very attractive solution. Um, what about heat? We're all giving off heat. In this room, uh, we're all giving off quite a lot of heat. Some of us in the form of hot air, others just radiating heat. Um, on average, about 100 watts each. So we could capture that, and that's quite a useful amount of, of energy. The problem is, what we'd have to do so, is wear a suit all over, uh, capture that energy. It would make us feel cold, and to be frank, would look a bit silly um, for the sake of, of a few watts of energy. So that's, that's not a very good solution. The easiest way to do it is from movement. Okay? If you're waving your hand around, as I am, uh, that movement could be used to generate some power. You could have something on your wrist that would generate enough power to maybe measure your pulse rate, uh, your blood pressure, blood sugar level, that kind of thing. You could maybe put something on your ankle. Just the movement of, of walking or running would generate enough power to measure how far you've gone, uh, how far you're moving, and so on. Obviously, you can, you can use that power in lots of different ways, and different parts of the body have different amounts of power available. You know, the most powerful part of your body is your legs, so sitting on a, a, a cycling machine or a running machine you may be generating enough power to keep your PC running. Uh, you know, quite a, a useful amount of power, but it's going to inconvenience you. So is there a benefit? You know, if you want to just make a phone call, you're not going to get out a, a bike, cycle a bit and to generate power. You want something that's not going to be inconvenient. So how can you do that? What we really want to do is capture energy that no one else is using that is going, otherwise going to waste. There are situations where that's, that's quite important, uh, and maybe you would put up with some inconvenience. So um, a soldier on the battlefield has lots of electronic gadgets, GPS, radio, night sight goggles, and if you run out of batteries, then you're in big trouble, you don't know where you are, you don't know what you're doing, and so on. Um, and so soldiers carry around something like 10 kilograms of batteries, which is a big chunk of, of the, the kit that they carry around. So what about if you could generate that power from the, the motion of m walking around, marching, running, whatever, enough to power your electronic gadgets without having to carry all those batteries around. Um, that's okay if you're a soldier, you're prepared to go to that inconvenience because it's doing something useful. But for your average user, um, that's not really going to help. So what else can you do? What you really want is something that doesn't cause inconvenience, something that captures energy that would otherwise be wasted. And one form of that is, is from walking, but using just the normal movement of footfall 
to generate power. So when you walk around, the heel of your shoe compresses a bit, the sole bends, and that energy that goes into that is wasted normally. Okay? Um, so what can you do about that? Well, these are a pair of boots designed to generate electrical power. Um, designed for the, the imaginatively named Electric Shoe Company. Um, what this consists of is a little device that sits inside the heel of the shoe, and each time you take a step, it generates a small amount of power. Okay? It's not going to uh, heat your house or light it up, but it's enough to charge a mobile phone. It works out that you walk for 10 minutes, you can talk for one minute. So it's a useful contribution. And this particular prototype isn't particularly comfortable, but it would be very easy to make that into a more usable, comfortable device. But the electric shoe company, uh, you probably haven't heard of it because it never really lasted very long, because they've not really thought through how it would work. The idea was you'd have your mobile phone charged from your shoe. But no one wants a mobile phone in their shoe. You don't want wires <laughs> running up your leg. You don't want to only be able to make phone calls when you've got your special shoes on. <laughs> so what, what are the alternatives? Well, one idea is how about just a, an insert that goes into your shoe that does all the clever stuff. You know, in terms of a, a phone, for instance, the bit that takes a lot of power is the long-range communication and the processing. So what you could have is a shoe insert that just slips inside a shoe, generates the power for that part of it, and then you just have a low power, short range wireless link, like a Bluetooth link to a, a handset or an earpiece. And if you can do that, if you've got that kind of reasonably high power stuff in your shoe, then you can add on other things. You could have a, an energy harvesting device on your wrist to measure your blood rate, your, your blood uh, pressure, pulse, etc. You could have movement sensors to detect whether you're able to move around, so monitoring your, your vital signs, communicating to your shoe, and putting it, and then processing that, communicating to a, uh, a central station for, for things like telehealth, where you want to be monitoring people's health continuously, but you don't want to inconvenience them. Another way of looking at it is, is turn the whole thing inside out. Rather than putting it on the person, put it in the, in the external world, and use energy from lots of people to generate power. That has some advantages because then you're not trying to fit everything inside a shoe, you know, that's quite a problem. And you can generate power that's, that's useful for lots of people. The ideal situation for that is somewhere where there are lots of people all the time walking in defined places. Places like the tube station stairs. So all day long people are walking up and down those stairs and if you put one of these devices on one step it will generate enough power for a mobile phone but it could do other useful things. It could monitor how many people are uh, in a particular area. Uh, that can be quite useful if you've suddenly got to evacuate people. You can know where all the people are. Uh, it's useful for marketing. You know, if you're a marketer, what you want to know is within a shop, where are people going, which, where do they spend time looking at, and you could have these things in a floor that would generate enough power to monitor the people there and then provide that information to some network. Um, these are a couple of very simple examples of, of energy harvesting staircases. So uh, the top right, left, that one's there, um, is essentially the stair tread. When you step on it, it moves by a few millimetres and by some jiggery pokery that is converted into electrical energy that powers, in this case, those, those LEDs. And it generates a useful amount of power, not on the scale of Drax, but on the scale of a, a mobile phone. Um, they did this in, in Tokyo, actually, um, in a, a railway station. They covered the whole floor in energy harvesting devices. And what they used was, the power from that was used to power the ticket machines. Personally, I think they missed a trick in doing that. What they should have done is use it to power a vending machine, which would vend only Mars bars. <laughs> Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. I hope that's put you in the mood for some lunch. I'm reliably informed that lunch doesn't consist of Mars bars. Um, so enjoy your lunch. <laughs>